terrible things that can happen if we do not rise up and speak and live and shine a light in the very hour we need to. ...passages, and they're countless. I'm not even kidding. I can spend hours with you and show you what Jesus said out of his own words verbatim. In fact, you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I am the eternal door to eternal life. So what Jesus was basically saying is that nobody else can give eternal life. Now we know only we know God to be the only one who gives eternal life. If that's the case, then Jesus, out of his own claims, once again, affirmed that he was God. Right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through me. In other words, Jesus was also claiming that the destination, the final place where I want you guys to go and to be reconciled with, that's the Father, right? But there's only one way. And it's exclusive. That's true me and nobody else. He never claimed that it was, he was a prophet. And just like you, I thought he was a prophet until I cracked the Bible open and I let the Holy Spirit speak to me audibly. And the Holy Spirit did speak to me and brought me back to every verse. And today I can claim with all assurance that Jesus is Lord and he is also the Son of God. Beautiful. Man. I'm happy for you that you found your way. That's one. Uh, the reason I can't see it the same way is because... I try to look for the, the guidance from God, the guidance from God. So, so who do you think Jesus is in that case? Because we never claim that we never claim that Jesus was anybody else but God. So we still believe that Jesus is God, for He is the imprint of the Father. And I want you to know that just before we move we move on with with, with your next question or statement. Um, let me let me see how I can put this. Okay, but but do you believe that Christians believe that 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 Christian uh, that Jesus is is not God? Yes, of course. Uh, it's just for it's just for the channel because I was preaching. You guys walked up to me and I want to have this conversation with you. All right, but but you okay? Why would you mind the mic? I should just ask it. Okay, okay, no worries. I'll I'll get rid of the mic, I guess. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. All right. It has. It has. I thought that the Quran was never changed, but in fact, if you go and read, uh, if you if you read some of your books, you'll see that the Quran was, you know, eight out of nine Qurans were burnt, and one was actually compiled, you know, from different places, and it was it was brought together, and the Quran that you have today was was not the original Quran, and in fact, it was actually compiled a hundred years after Muhammad died. So if you guys and, and let me yes, go ahead. You're a Christian. Every Muslim, yeah. The Bible, the Bible has the Bible, the Bible has been has been rewritten, of course, because it's been written in various languages, right? Uh, we 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 can con we concur that there's hundreds of languages around the world. So when you take a Semite language and you want to translate it in different languages, right? It, it, would, it would make sense that you would rewrite the Bible in different languages, just like Arabic, for example. There's things that. You know, if, if the Quran was written in different languages, wasn't it? Well, it's the same for the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have... You're talking about version. Yeah, there's different versions. And I'll tell you why there's different versions. Because if you go back to the original text, right? Which is the Greek for the New Testament, but also the Hebrew for the Old Testament. But there's things in the old, uh, uh, from the Hebrew and the Greek that we can't, you know, fully understand. And so what they did is they came up with versions that are thought for thought, but also word for word, just to make it easier for whether you're a beginner in the faith or, or you're someone that has walked with the Lord for quite a while now. And so it's easier for you to understand. So you, in that case, you need like the, you know, the word for word, because there's things in Greeks that you can't translate or transliterate into English or French, just like Arabic, for example. Back then, Arabic was very poetic. You know, when people traveled, right, and came back home to the Arab Arabic Peninsula, and we know that of Muhammad, for example, going, you know, uh, uh, going uh, abroad and coming back and telling his friends around a fire, right, what he did, he would speak the language in a very poetic uh, way, in a very poetic form. So it was an oral tradition that was passed on from uh, from a uh, person to another. And so the Greek, in the Greek, there are statements and there are, there are, there are words that we cannot uh, translate easily and so that's why we need you know that that ease for people to understand which is why we came out with versions but it does not change the context of the Bible for the context is actually the same because all across the Bible you read of the same story it's a story of salvation where God is pursuing the heart of man and he wants to have a relationship with man and you know he sent his son out of love you know to die for us on the cross and so he would redeem us and make us his children and it's the same story all across 
and there's no difference there. So the context is the same, but I agree, versions are different. Now, bring me any version that you want, and we can make a linear comparative study, place them one next to another, and you'll find out real quick that it's actually the same context, but the variances are in terms of, you know, the way it's said. If I say a sentence in a way, right, and then say another, the same sentence, but in, in a different way, right, the context doesn't have to change. And the proof is that we have original manuscripts. We have more than 25,000 manuscripts that date back to 400 years before Jesus even came on the scene. From the Old Testament, but also from the New Testament, that could argue that there were no distortion there, no alteration whatsoever. So explain to me how, right, how, how, how is it possible to have, uh, 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 to have rewritten uh, the Bible in different ways, changing the context, right? When a hundred years after Jesus, tens of thousands of Bibles were sent abroad to different nations by the apostles themselves, right? That made sure that every church would receive copies so everybody would be on board with the gospel message. And today, if you go all over the world, you see that it's the same, the same context. It wasn't changed. Everybody believes that you need to repent, you need to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and you need to be redeemed right in a relationship to the Father so you would have eternal life. Any other questions? Uh, no okay, sorry. I forgot about the, the mic issue. So let me ask you this. You believe that Jesus is a prophet? I, I, I do have a question. Go. Well, can I ask you this question first? Sure. Okay, because I just want to, because she asked a question, I want to ask you a question, and then I'll take your question afterwards. So you believe that Jesus is a prophet, right? He's just a prophet. Who was Jesus' father? He had no father. Well, you said right, he had no father, and that's exactly what we believe. We believe that Jesus had no father because he came from the father. So he had no, he had no human, you know, figure father. Right? And that's what the Quran says, doesn't it? Right. And, and you guys say that Jesus is but a prophet, but why is it that, you know, the Quran calls him also the word of God? When well, we also in the Bible... Okay. So let me ask you this. Is your word yours, or is your word somebody else's word? Is your word your word? When you speak a word, is it yours? Whatever you utter out of your mouth, is it yours, or is it somebody else's word? No, but I mean, your word, what you speak, right? What comes out of your mouth, what comes out of out of your mind and your heart, is it is it is it embedded in you or is it embedded in somebody else? Like meaning that is, is it grounded in you or grounded in some somebody else? I'm speaking by truth, it's my word. But if I'm relaying somebody else's message, right. it's somebody else's. But at the end of the day, you're the one who's speaking that truth. You don't want to speak, whether you're speaking about somebody else or speaking for yourself, about yourself, for example, it's still, no matter what, it's still your word. What I'm trying to say here is that the word came forth from God. You call him the word of God, Kalimatullah. You also call him Ruhan Min Allah, right? And what that tells me is that if that spirit came from God, but that word also came out from God himself, right? It must be describing the very nature of God. And so if the word came from God, it is not a, the word of another God. It is the word of the God, and the word is God. And that's exactly what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in John 1 that the word was with God, okay? And that the word was God, and that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld it. Beholding that word, beholding that word, Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth for the glory of the Father. In other words, what the Bible tells us is that the word was always with God. It was part of God. It revealed the nature of God. And when it was revealed to us or came, uh, uh, came to be manifest among us, we saw right, and heard God himself speak through Jesus. And that's exactly what the Quran points to. The same exact pattern. And yet, you claim, you, you claim, him, you claim him to only to be a prophet when Jesus never claimed such words. And you see, I'll say astaghfirullah because Jesus never said that. Jesus said 700 years before Muhammad came on the scene that I will die, I will be buried, and I will, I will rise from the dead. And if that's exactly what Jesus did. And he also said, behold, I will come back in the last days. Not as a prophet, but as a son of God. But the Quran denies all of that. I mean... How can, you have, how can you have the Old Testament pointing to the New Testament, then the New Testament referencing the Old Testament from cover to cover, 340 prophecies speaking about the coming of the Messiah, which was longly awaited from the Jews. And then as soon as Jesus comes on the scene, right? 
as soon as Jesus comes on the scenes, he dies on the cross and he says, listen, don't believe anything else that comes after him because any other type of gospel is actually a lie because even Satan comes in as, a, as an angel of light. Oh, he did, he did say that. He did say that. Okay. Okay, come closer. Come closer. Okay, you want to be on the mic? Why not? You came up to me. Well, let's 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 have let's have a conversation on the. Well, we're not a speaker's corner, so I, I don't know what you're trying to do. Okay, just give me a second. Give me a second. I just want to finish up with them. But but you're wrong about this, man. You're wrong. Just stay here, man. I'm not running anywhere. Just stay here. Stay here. Let's talk about it, man. Let's see what you have to say. Yeah, yeah. Just let's let's finish up. Let's finish up here, and then we'll take a turn, and then we'll see what you have to say. All right. So so you you had a question for me. What what was your question? Like who? Like who? Help. Give me names. Give me names. I, okay, I'm give me names. Gonna, I'm not going to tell you that I know all of the sources and the Bible by heart and the Quran by heart and everything around it by heart. But mm -hmm. This is what I've heard from Christians themselves. Okay. Yeah? Let, let, I might be wrong. Um, I'm not, uh, as I told you, I don't have everything memorized. I don't have all my sources, sources in my head. Uh, but from what I know, mm -hmm. A priest back then could rewrite the Bible in his own way, however he wanted, and ask people to pay him money for for being a priest. Okay, so 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 wait a second. But I need facts. I need facts because you guys are you're saying facts. Show me the facts because you came up with a claim, and if you have a claim, then you have a burden of proof on yourself. Apologetics tells us. Give me a second, brother. Yes, I I'll, I'll get to you. Just give me a second. Just let me just let me respond to whatever he's saying, and then we'll get to you. Okay, and then you can argue. You can counter argue. Oh man, no. Wait a second. I asked him to give me names. Give me names. Just give me names. Okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. But I need names, brother. Okay, I don't have them memorized. If you do, you can state them. I would love to have names. Just give me names. RSV? Yeah, RSV. RSV, okay. RSV has been changed by who? By who? By who? By who? Who got the RSV? Who made it? How about you tell me? I don't read the RSV. I'm going to be honest with you. I read the ASV and the KJV. So I'd be lying to you if I said I read the RSV. I, re I read the KJV. Okay, so let's finish up with the brother here because we're hopping from one person to another. Let's keep order. All right, go ahead. There's only one thing that I really have in mind here after everything you've been saying, and it's... I try to look for the truth with a big T. I came here with an open mind. Amen. I want to hear what you have to say on against or with anything you have because I haven't fully done my research. Okay. However... And I respect that. I respect that. I respect that. I respect that. The big T is only one. There isn't different versions of the truth. The truth, logically, is only one. Mm -hmm. If you take the truth, if you take the truth with a big T, but nobody's saying otherwise. If you take the truth with a big T and you change it, even if you change the semantics, which can change the meaning in one way or another, mm -hmm. it's no longer the truth with a big T. Okay. And that's why I cannot take what you say seriously because it loses. Structural integrity when it doesn't have the truth with a big T. It's just written by man. And something that I believe to be written by man is not something that I will follow because man is imperfect. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Quran hasn't been changed. I don't have evidence that the Quran has been changed. Um, so was it not written by man? It was, was it not written by men? It was transcribed by men. But the okay, but who wrote the Quran? Who wrote the Quran? The words that came out, yeah. are, we believe, are the words of God. No, but you just said written by men. So I'm just going to your initial claim because you made yeah. you made a couple of claims. Okay, I just want to touch base on these claims. The first claim that you made, what was it? Can you please remind me of that first claim, just for the sake of, I've lost my train of thoughts. The second one was that you said that men wrote the Bible. Now we never claimed that the Bible was written by anybody else but men. But we said that man wrote it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We never claimed otherwise, right? But you, my friend, since you're going to go with that claim, then explain to me how can you, right, then back up the fact that Muhammad himself wrote the Quran by his own, by his own, by his own hand. 
Muhammad did not even write. Muhammad did not write. Were you there? Were you there? Brother, it's a historical fact. Historical fact. What historical fact? There were no witnesses in that cave. Were you there? It wasn't just in the. Okay, so. But wait a second. I mean, can, can I can I respond to whatever? Because you made claims. All right. So I made claims. You see, you're telling me that the Bible was written by men. I I I I, 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 I responded by saying Muhammad wrote your very Quran, and nobody was there. You, there were no witnesses in that cave. There were. And 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 Muhammad came 700 years after Jesus. I was a, I, I was a Muslim. I'm no longer a Muslim. I'm a Christian today. Of course I know, man. Muhammad received it from the angel Gabriel. And by the way, in case you don't know, right? He had, he had, he had a lot of doubt. He had so much doubt, bro, that he was he was becoming suicidal after 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 a while. He went back to Khadija. Read your own hadith from Al Bukhari. You know that, right? He was sweat. He was sweating cold sweats at night. He would wake up and tell his wife, "Listen, I don't even know if it's an angel of God that actually showed up to me, or was it a demon that actually revealed himself to me." He himself was not even sure and certain. How can you be certain of who wrote the Quran if even Muhammad was not even certain, bro? Come on, read your own hadith, and you talk about truthfulness. How was the Quran written? Repeat the story to me. How was the Quran written? Okay, it was received. Yeah. It was received on many, many years, right? And it came in parts. And every time there was a revelation, it came from on high, and it said, "Write down your Quran. Uh, write down, write down what was revealed to your own prophet." Muhammad wrote, but then Abu Bakr wrote also, and his and his and his and his apostles also wrote. Okay, so okay, so all the companions wrote. Yeah, the Quran was completed. Okay. Uh huh. Right. And, and let me ask you a question then. Since you made a statement, when did it came about? Why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? When when did it come about? When did it come about? I'm just asking a simple question. When was it compiled? Just tell me when was it compiled? It was compiled when? When? And when was when was that? When was that? Two years after the prophet. No, come on, man. It wasn't written two years after the prophet, man. That was. It was six generations after, and even Muhammad's biography came about 180 years after Muhammad actually died, brother, man. You don't know what you're talking about. You're spitting lies. Do you realize how many times the Bible's been translated over time? Okay, okay, wait a second. I, of course I want to talk to you. Of course, you're not a tough opponent, bro. Come on, man. You see how, how proud for you are? Quran. You know the Quran. It's, it's been so what, man? So what? The context itself, man, is full of apostasies. Your Quran is full of contradictions, man. Have you read the Bible? Did you read the Bible? So initially, before you got here, let me just remind the people what this was about. Let me just remind people. Just give me a second. When this man came up to me, right, I was preaching about Jesus. And, 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 and the, the whole conversation started as to whether Jesus was actually the Son of God or was he just a prophet. And this is where we're, this is where this is where we're at right now. So 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 the question is, bro, if you if you don't believe that Jesus is God, then who do you think Jesus is? He's just a prophet, right? From your own, from your own word, right? From your Quran. So why do you call him the Word of God then in the Quran? No, the Word of God. You don't even know what you're talking about because the Word has been explained in the Quran itself. Okay. The Word of God. So is your word yours or not? Is your word created? Is your word created or not? Everything is created, right? So he just said that the word is created. And funny enough, the Quran tells us that the word that came from Allah was also created, but it's still part of Allah. If your word is part of you and it's created, it's a defines your character. And if it defines your character, guess what? The word of God is Jesus Christ. What are you talking about, my friend? I have a question. Oh, come on, you know that, man. Why are you speaking in the mic? Because I was preaching. That's I was preaching. You guys do that one. No, when, I came up, so when I came up to you, when I was walking by and I did this, it's just because you're loud and the way you do it is pretty annoying. It's not graceful. The way you do it sounds like a big one. It's not graceful. I don't mind. It sounds like yeah, I, don't, I don't mind what you say. It's, 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 not, it's not the best way. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. When the prophets, by the way, and that's that's just that's just that's just a piece of knowledge for you. Your own prophets, when they went out, if you believe the prophets, they scream on top of rooftops and they make sure that their voices are actually carried out for everybody to hear. Do that. Don't use the mic. Jesus tells us that whatever you hear in the secret, go and speak loud on the rooftops. And that's exactly what we do. This.